Okay. So, um, getting back to where we left off, let's pick up from there. We can now calculate the actual molar concentration of the acetic acid when we, when we first deal with it. But we realize this acetic acid is going to act like a weak acid, and it's going to ionize. So our general form of a weak acid ionization can be written in shortcut as a protonated acid, hydrogen plus an anion, splitting into hydrogen ions and those conjugate bases, the anions of the original acid. Now, this is a weak acid equilibrium. For every unit of material that moves forward, there are some units of material that come back. So, at some point, the rate of the forward reaction, the production of these ions, will be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, the joining of these ions back into the original acid. So, to figure out what's happening when we reach equilibrium, we're going to assemble an ice table, which takes into account three times the initial values with an I, some amount of change with a C, and the values that we would have at equilibrium, or at the end of our process, when we see no more net changes in amounts. Um, for the purpose of this problem, we're going to leave everything in molarity because we're just one solution. We're not adding volume. We're not taking volume. We're not adding material from any other place. We're just dealing with the solution as it is. If we were doing this with a limiting reactant approach or some other reaction like a neutralization or a titration in which we're adding volumes, we might have to go back and do this by moles first and then account for the total volume to get us back to concentration. This one we can do direct. I uh, worked out this calculation real quick, and that is 1.16 molar acetic acid. Now, initially, our concentration of hydrogen we're going to label as a zero. It's not really zero. There are some hydrogen ions in all samples of water, but compared to the amount we're going to generate, it's practically zero. And of course, initially there are no acetic acid molecules, or sorry, no acetates present because it hasn't ionized yet. So that's our initial condition. We have the weak acid and none of the products, but we know that's got to change. This system has to go forward to make products. So there's going to be some loss of acid. Now, everything in this process is a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. For every acid molecule that breaks, we get one piece of hydrogen and one piece of the anion. So every time we lose a weak acid molecule, we make a hydrogen ion plus, and we make the associated anion. So this process is going to go back and forth of these splitting and these rejoining until it establishes an equal rate of reaction in both directions. At that point, we'll be at equilibrium, and we can actually calculate the concentrations of these species in solution at that time with this expression. So we just add these columns together, the initial minus the change, the initial plus the change, and this is what we would see at equilibrium. The last piece we'll need for that then is the equilibrium constant for this acid, which is a commonly known one, and set up a quick algebraic expression to turn out values of the weak acid, its hydrogen ions, and its conjugate base anions.